So here we go. I hope you can see everything. Oh, yes, the recording okay. is now. Uh, I can hear you clearly and your screen visible as well. Thank you so much, Anis. All the best. OK, so then I will start. Uh, hello and welcome to the last session from today. The session will cover Microsoft Sentinel, the modern CM system. Uh, before we start, I want to give you a short introduction about me. My name is Hannes Lagler Grüner. I'm a lead cloud architect in Austria. I'm working as lead, con uh, lead architect, lead consulting in one of the biggest consulting companies in Austria. I'm also a Microsoft Asia MVP since three years right now. So it's the fourth year uh, Microsoft MVP and I'm really happy about this. You can find me everywhere. So you can, uh, if you want to Google me, you can find me on, on, on X, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, you can find me on, um, I have my own blog called cloudblocker.at and you can also find videos from uh, my sessions on YouTube if you want. Okay, so let's start with the session today. So today we will cover uh, Microsoft Sentinel and we have three questions. Uh, and the session agenda will cover exactly this. So what is Microsoft Sentinel? Why should we use it? Why is the best choice to use Microsoft Sentinel? And what are the best steps to how, uh, how we can implement Microsoft Sentinel? Okay, so let's start with the what. What is Microsoft Sentinel? Microsoft Sentinel is a cloud native CM system which means uh, it's based on a platform as a service model. So you don't have to think about uh, sizing. You don't have to think about uh, how many hardware is uh, behind my system. You don't have to think about backup and so on. So Microsoft managed this for you. You will uh, you are using Microsoft Sentinel and you bring data into the system and can work with this solution. It's a hybrid solution, so not only for cloud products, you can also bring data from other hyperscalers or you can bring your data from on-premise to Microsoft Sentinel. You have here a limitless cloud speed and scale. So if you start small, so you transfer your data to Microsoft Sentinel, for example, the first day with one gigabyte and the second day you transfer five terabyte and data to Microsoft Sentinel, you don't have to think about scaling up, scaling down, so Microsoft will handle this for you. You have artificial intelligence uh, on your side to um, detect, to, to, to bring a faster detection into your system. So this will help your SOC analysts um, to detect incidents, to detect threats, and also to verify and clear the uh, threats. It's cost efficient and secure. So you will start with a pay-as-you-go model. You only pay what you use, what you how many data you interest in to Microsoft Sentinel. And for, for sure, it's also secure. So you have different options to bring the data into Microsoft Sentinel with a standardized um, uh, API, also with uh, connector, connectors from Microsoft or from other hyperscalers or from uh, other vendors. Okay, so that's the what is Microsoft Sentinel. So it's really simple to understand. It's a modern CM system. You can use it as a platform, as a service model, and you can use it uh, to bring your data into the system and to analyze your data. The why. Why is Microsoft Sentinel the best choice for your new CM system? So let's think about the typical question when you want to implement a new CM system in your environment. These are the typical questions. System size, so right sizing. How big should my system size to bring all my data into the system? What about disconnected services? So, for example, you have IoT sensoric data uh, sensor sensors uh, outside your company network, and you want to bring this data also to Microsoft Sentinel. How can you achieve this? The cloud integration. So everyone is using Office 365. Everyone is using maybe Defender products and what, what connectors are available to bring exactly this data into the system. What are the monthly costs? Are there required upfront costs or up, upfront investments available to bring the new system, in, uh, the, the, the same system into your environment? And at the end, you always go to an automation as well. So you want to implement SOA, you want to automate uh, some incidents to um, 
to fix the problem or to maybe um, you know, send data to another system as well. So how can you achieve this with Microsoft Sentinel? The right sizing. So you don't have to care about uh, the right sizing because you're using a platform as a service model and the system is scaling up and scaling down uh, depending on your requirements. About disconnected services. So how can you connect services outside your company network? It's really easy. So you have here, this is a public service. So Microsoft Sentinel is a public service. We also can use uh, an API. There's a standardized API. You can bring your data from outside your company network to Microsoft Sentinel. It's really, really easy to do. About cloud integration, Azure, Office 365. So we have a lot of data connectors. I will show this in my first demo in a few minutes. Also, you have a lot of data connectors available so from Microsoft, some from third party vendors, from other hyperscalers. Or if, you, if it's required, you can also develop your own connector if you have an application where there, uh, uh, who is, uh, uh, where no connectors available. About the monthly costs. You're starting with pay as a go, so you only pay what you want, or only pay what you ingest to Microsoft Sentinel. And over the time, when you know how many data you ingest regularly to Microsoft Sentinel, you have the ability to implement reserved instances to get a better price from Microsoft. For example, is starting with 100 gigabyte per day, and you get here a 30% uh, lesser cost. Upfront investment, so there is nothing, there is no upfront investment, so you don't need a, speci uh, a special uh, license, you don't need uh, special uh, specified hardware or, uh, or anything. There is no upfront requirement, so this is really, really important. And from the automation perspective, there is no automation limits, so uh, I've developed a lot of automation, a lot of playbooks. Uh, for Microsoft Sentinel, and, uh, and it's really awesome what you can do with the automation part here. So you can automate really everything what you want. Okay, so the how. How can we start with Microsoft Sentinel? So normally you're defining your use cases. You say, okay, I want to, um, want to achieve use case X, Y, Z. And the first step what you have to do, you have to think about how can we collect data from where we get the data to achieve the, the use case? Then you go ahead and implement a visibility. So you have your data in your system and you want to implement a visibility. How can you do this? Then you go ahead and implement use cases, uh, the, the analytics rules for your use cases. Then you can also use or implement hunting rules. And at the end, you can handle your incidents and implement automation. So these are the normal steps to uh, implement Microsoft Sentinel, and we cover this now a little bit more in detail. So what about collecting data? How can you collect data? So here you can see on the left side, you can see your on-premise environment, other hyperscaler or the edge, what you prefer. On the right side, you can see Microsoft Sentinel. And Microsoft Sentinel is a solution on top of Azure Log Analytics. So Azure Log Analytics is the base system and you have a solution on top, Microsoft Sentinel. So you ingest the data into Log, and Log Analytics and you have here different options. The first option is you can implement Microsoft 365 data or Azure uh, activity data, what you prefer. And here it's really important to understand um, you have the ability to implement raw data. So for example, you can implement uh, Microsoft 365, Exchange Online, Teams, SharePoint data, and you bring the data inside Microsoft Sentinel. So you have the raw data inside Microsoft Sentinel. You also have the ability to implement uh, security alerts. What does this mean? It's, it's really easy. So let's think about Microsoft 365 Defender, the XDR solution. You have here the ability to implement the, only the alerts to your system, or you can implement the raw data as well. So it's depending on your requirements, it's depending on your use cases. Then you can go ahead and implement collectors. So for example, uh, Microsoft Windows systems, you want to uh, bring event log data, the security event log, the application event log, or what you prefer into your Microsoft Sentinel. We have here different options to do this. Then you have maybe Linux systems. You also want to implement the data into Microsoft Sentinel, or you can bring 
um, data from your firewalls, for example, or from, from your switches over syslog or common event format collectors into Microsoft Center. Then you have the ability to implement text to or MS Graph. So this is the thread indicators, the TIs. You have here the ability to use the Microsoft Defender uh, TI uh, service, or you can use other services as well if you want to implement it to Microsoft Center. And then you have the ability to implement custom logs or your your own developed um, application, for example, and you want to implement exactly these log files also into Microsoft Center, and you can use the API to bring the data to Microsoft Center. So these are the typical uh, options what you have to connect services to Microsoft Sentinel. And here one important thing, when we think about pricing, Asia activity logs. So here all activity data from the Asia subscription, for example, you have maybe one subscription or if you're using um, uh, enterprise scale framework landing zone concept, you have more subscriptions and you can bind um, and policy on top of all subscriptions, for example, on a management group, and bring the data to Microsoft Sentinel for free. So you never pay for Asia activity logs. You never pay for a Microsoft 365 activity logs. So if you want to connect Exchange Online, Teams, SharePoint, you have the ability to use this connector, and it's also for free. And at the end, also uh, alerts from Microsoft Threat Protections are also for free. So this is the important part here, only the alerts, not the raw data from Microsoft Defender XDR solutions, for example. And at the end, you also have the ability if you have a Microsoft 365 E5 license with a security E5 license on, on top, you have here also a benefit of five gigabyte per user per day. OK, ah, I'm sorry, not five gigabyte, five megabyte. OK, so that's after the, from the connector perspective. Implement visibility. Visibility is really easy to implement, so it's nothing new. You can use here workbooks. Workbooks is um, an, a way to visualize your data in Microsoft Sentinel. It's nothing new, so you can see uh, you have also the ability to use workbooks, for example, for Microsoft Entry ID, but you can also use it for Microsoft Sentinel. And you have here an, an, an huge so and built-in workbooks available. It's, it's really awesome how many are available at the moment. So from Microsoft, from the community, from third-party vendors, you can use these workbooks. You can change the workbooks. You can um, use the source code, for example, from a Microsoft workbook and bring it to your own workbook if it's required. Um, we have here the ability to use different data sources. I will show this in a few minutes in the uh, live demo as well. Uh, you can use the the log analytics data, or you can also connect, for example, to the Asia Resource Explorer and query with uh, another query uh, Query uh, here, the Resource Explorer, for example, to get data from Microsoft Defender for Cloud. For example. But I will show this in a few minutes. From the analyze perspective, you have here the ability to use uh, analytics rules. So we have here a really, really huge uh, built-in rule collection available so you can use it for Microsoft from this uh, from the community or from third party vendor. It also requires uh, the right data source. So always think about from where can I get the data? What's the data connector? How can you bring the data into the system? And then you can think about how many are uh, what what use cases, what analytics rules should I implement? So we have here different options to implement or different rule types. The first one, Microsoft Security Defender uh, Asia ID or Microsoft Entry ID is the wrong name here. You have here the ability to generate uh, uh, to, to implement analytics rules based on the alert trigger, also based on the alert data from this um, data. You have also the ability to use fusion technology, so it's based on machine learning. So Microsoft implement here one rule per default, and this is a fusion rule. You also have the ability to use machine learning rules, but the most common um, analytics rules when you build your own rules are scheduled rules. So you're writing here your KQL query, implement the KQL query into the, uh, the, the scheduled rule, and that's uh, and run the, the rule, for example, every five minutes and look back five minutes. 
what happens? Uh, how, what's, what's the best choice for NRT rules? So this is near real time rules. So when we have here a difference between scheduled and near real time rules, it's really easy. So you can only implement scheduled rules with a trigger every five minutes. If you want to uh, get the alert in real time, uh, you can use near real time rules. But always keep in mind you have here a limited um, count of near real time rules per um, per analytics or per uh, Microsoft Sentinel environment, I guess the limit is at the moment 25 near real time rules. Okay, about infrastructure as code, so you can export and import your um, um, analytics rules. It's really, really easy. It's also really easy to write your own analytics rules in infrastructure as code, for example, Bicep, Terraform, how do you prefer? Okay, then we have the ability to use hunting. When you use hunting, you use hunting uh, before an incident occurs. So you want to scan your environment. You want to know, okay, how, how what's happened in my environment during a compromise. So the big difference here between analytics rules and hunting, hunting rules is uh, analytics rules are running in the back end and every 10 minutes, for example, and generate an incident. Hunting rules are always manually started rules, also based on KQL query, uh, but what you can do here is you can use live streaming. So for example, you can convert your hunting rule to a live streaming rule and the rule will run in the backend and give you an information, a pop-up information, okay, when uh, the rule finds something. Or you can also use the hunting rules after a compromisation. So we have here also a huge um, uh, library of built-in rules from Microsoft or you can write your own hunting rules, what you prefer. On top to hunting, you have also have the ability to use advanced hunting uh, with notebooks. So you have here the ability to implement Jupyter notebooks, for example. Um, but keep in mind, if you want to use this, you need another service like machine learning and so on to implement exactly this advanced hunting rules. Okay, so let's go to the first demo, to the first um, demo about Microsoft Sentinel. I will give you an overview about Sentinel, how it looks like. Uh, also, I give you an uh, idea of how many connectors are available. Then we go to the workbooks. You can see what are the built-in workbooks, how can you customize your workbooks, or how can you implement your own workbooks. And at the end, I will show you an analytics and hunting rules also from uh, Microsoft Sentinel. Okay, so let's switch to my environment. So here you can see Microsoft Sentinel. Microsoft Sentinel, once more, is a solution on top of log analytics, and that's the reason why you can see here on the left side logs also. And this is the backend Azure log analytics. So when we click here on logs, we go into the backend and have here the ability to write our KQL queries based on our data or uh, on our connectors. So this is the overview. You can see here in the overview how many incidents do you have, how, uh, how many uh, automation playbooks are running or closed incidents, how many data are coming into your system, uh, what data connectors are healthy or unhealthy. It's really, really important to have a good overview about your data. And also on the right side, you can see also your analytics currently status. You have 15 analytics rules in place and all 15 analytics rules are enabled. Okay, so. On the left side, you can also see here, we have here incident workbooks. So we'll cover this in a few minutes. And on the bottom, you can see here the settings. And we always start with a pay-as-you-go model. You can see here, I have my pay-as-you-go model here active. And when you achieve, for example, the 100 gigabyte per day, you can switch here into a reserved instance uh, payment model and you will get 32% uh, percent discount uh, over pay years ago. It's really, really important. Okay, about the data connector. The first thing what you have to think about is your use cases and then how can, uh, from where we get the data to achieve the use cases. So we have here a new version from Microsoft Sentinel and the old version, you have here the ability to go to the data connectors, select your data connector, enable it, and that's it. Uh, now Microsoft is using the Content Hub. The Content Hub bring you or the brings you solutions, and you can see here we have 30, uh, th over 300 solutions available at the moment, 
and you can use the solution uh, and implement and install it to Microsoft Sentinel. And nearly all solutions are for free. No, uh, really, nearly. Uh, one solution is not for free, and this is SAP, what I know at the moment. But what you can do here is you can go here, for example, to uh, Google Cloud Connector for GCP, and you can see here on the right side what is all over what is in in the solution, what services are in the solution, and you can see here we have here ten analytics rules. We have here one data connector available, ten hunting rules, one workbook, one three playbooks, and one parser is available. So when you want to install it, click here and install, select everything what you want to implement in your environment. And then everything is here. Okay, so when we go, for example, to Microsoft 365, so we have here the ability to implement Microsoft 365. So I've installed it in my environment. So you can see here on the right side what kind of uh, solutions are always uh, are installed in my environment. And you can see here I have Microsoft 365. It's installed in my environment. This solution brings one data connector, 21 hunting rules, 14 analytics rules, and one and three workbooks. But in my environment, I only have activated the, um, uh, the connector at the moment. And you can see here exactly on the left side, the connector. And when you go to the Microsoft 365 data connector, you have here the ability to open the connector page, select your data here. I don't have the permission at the moment, uh, but you can hear, uh, see here, select the data, what you want to bring into your system, exchange SharePoint Teams, click on apply, and everything is connected and your data are coming into Microsoft Sentinel, in this case for free. When we go to Microsoft 365 Defender solution, um, this is here, this is the new one, Microsoft Defender XDR, you can see here on the right side what it's what it's so uh, uh, what solutions are included in this data connector. You can see here Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, Identity, Cloud Apps, Defender Alerts, and so on and so on. When we go here to the data connector, open the data connector page, we have here two options. The first option is the free version or the free um, uh, data services, which are included in the Microsoft 365 Defender Alerts. So you have here the ability to connect incident and alerts. I don't have the permission at the moment, but when I click here on connect, all alert data from the source systems will be transferred to Microsoft Sentinel for free. If you want, or if your use cases requires raw data into in your system, you scroll down and have you have here the ability, for example, to bring from Microsoft Defender for Endpoint the device info data to your system. Keep in mind, this is not for free, so you will pay for the data interest when you select here device information. If you only select here the connect incident alerts, this is totally for free. Okay, so this is about the connectors. The next thing that we have is the visibility. How can we bring visibility into your system? We have here the ability to use workbooks. When you install and connector or a solution, for example, you also um, enable workbook templates. In this case, so when we go here to the templates, you have here the ability to use, for example, Microsoft 365. Exactly this connector here is enabled when I enable the solution or install the solution in my environment. What you can do here is you can select the workbook, click on save, select your uh, region, in my case is West Europe, Click on yes, click on save, and the workbook is now saved and available in your environment. And you can see the workbook here on the My Workbooks. And for example, one of the most important, in my point of view, workbooks is the um, uh, Workspace Usage Report. You can see here when we go to view saved workbook, we have here the ability to edit to uh, uh, edit the workbook and also to save. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong environment. So, okay. You can see here the Sentinel workspace. I don't have enabled the daily cap. I have here data retention of 90 days. And when I scroll down, I see all my data. 
which are coming to Microsoft Sentinel. In this case, the audit logs, Asia Active Directory or Microsoft Entra, Entra ID, non-interactive users and in logs. And here also can see uh, what kind of data are for free and what kind of data are um, chargeable. Okay, you also have here different options to bring your visibility to your environment. You have here the option to uh, also create your own workbooks if you want. So let me go here, select here the workbook. You have here the ability, and this is one issue here, to use different data sources. So when I go here to edit, uh, you can see when I scroll down, I'm using here really the um, data from log analytics. So I'm querying here my log analytics data. When I scroll up, you can see here I have Microsoft Defender for Cloud in place, and you can see here I have uh, 53% um, available or uh, achieved from my subscription. And this, this data coming really from Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So I don't have any data inside my log analytics workspace. When I click here on edit, you can see here, I've select here another data source and I click here on change. The normal data source is log, so this is the log analytics workspace. In this case, I'm using the Asia resource graph and query the Asia resource graph to get the information from Microsoft Defender for Cloud exactly for my subscription, how many uh, percent are achieved for Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Okay, that's the option what you have with workbooks. You can create your own workbooks. You can use the templates from Microsoft or the templates from the community, edit the template, bring your data into uh, the workbooks, so what you what you want, what you what's for your company really. Okay, then we have the ability to use analytics rules. So when we go here to analytics. You can see here, I have 15 analytics rules in place. I have here a lot of rule templates available. These rule templates are coming with uh, the solutions. So if you want to implement, for example, uh, this analytics rule, for example, you can see on the right side, uh, what kind of data are required to achieve, uh, to, to implement this uh, analytics rule. You click here and create the rule, uh, create the rule um, fill out the, the wizard. Uh, bring the visit to the end and click on save and you have it in your environment. But nevertheless, I have here a lot of analytics rules in place. You can see here the different rule types. In my case, I'm always using scheduled rules. Or if you want, you can also implement uh, near real-time rules. So a really simple analytics rules, uh, analytics rule here in, for example, is da, 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 uh, emergency account. Login. So when we go here and edit, you can see here the wizard or the, the options what you have. You can select here name and unique ID. You can define here the severity, informatical, low, medium, high. You also have here the ability to use your tactics based on the Mitre framework. And when we go to the rule logic, you can see here, this is my KQL query. Uh, this KQL query is using a watch list. So watch list is uh, an external array, what you can use to bring more flexibility to your uh, KQL queries. So in this case, you don't have to change your KQL query when you uh, implement a new emergency account, for example. You only have to update your uh, watch list um, and then the rule will start, will begin to monitor also the new account, for example. But you can see here, I'm covering here the sign in logs table. This is coming from Microsoft Entra ID connector. And here you can see um, I'm you, um, I want to uh, bring back the IP address, the location, the app display name, and the user, uh, discipline, uh, user principle name. And I'm using this uh, output here to implement entities. And entities is a really important to um, automate for the automation perspective and also from the uh, incident perspective, we will see this in a few minutes. Okay, and then you have the ability to use hunting rules. So here you can see I have uh, hunting rules in place. Uh, I have here 32 hunting rules available. These are coming with uh, the solutions or with this, uh, including the solutions and you have the ability to select, for example, this hunting rule, run the query and you will get the output here uh from exactly this hunting okay so let's go ahead you look at the time it's okay so 
incident. We have now the data in place. We have uh, we know uh, what what use cases are uh, planned for your system uh, for your environment, and now we are go ahead and implement incidents or imp implement the analytics rules, and then we are want to work with incidents. Incidents is a collection of related alerts, events, and bookmarks. What available in your environment, you can assign incidents to a user. For example, for the SOC analyst XYZ, this is always based on the Microsoft Entry ID. So you can search here uh, and assign the, assign the incident to a user in Microsoft Entry ID. You can change uh, or manage the, the, the status. So you can change it from new to active, from active to closed, what you prefer. You can also add tags and comments to your incidents to uh, uh, get a better understanding. Okay, what what's happened in the incident? What uh, what what you have done in the past, and what you will do in the future. You can also trigger automated playbooks if you want, and they can also implement tasks. It's a task list what you have to do with the incident to uh, finalize everything. And at the end, we think about automation. We want to automate an incident. For example, uh, we want to revoke a user session. We want to block. Um, and an and, um, MDE device or what you prefer. And how to achieve this? We implement here automation rules um, or we implement also logic apps in this case. And we have here the ability to use different triggers. In this case, the first one, the alert based trigger is the oldest one. It's also deprecated. I'm also always recommend use incident based trigger or the new functionality entity based trigger. Incident-based trigger, um, you will send the information from the whole incident to the trigger, to the logic app, and it can work with all data from the incident, for example. Entity-based trigger, uh, you can say, okay, I want to execute the playbook for exactly, exactly this user, only for this user, and you can uh, implement here entity-based trigger if you prefer. But at the end, I will show you how it works. And you get a better understanding about incidents and also the automation perspective. Okay, let's go here to the incidents. I have here a lot of incidents open and you can see here from different data sources, uh, Microsoft Sen uh, Asia Sentinel means, okay, this is a scheduled query and this query is searching inside log analytics and bring the data uh, uh, generate based on this data an incident. You can also see here Microsoft Defender. In this case, is uh, from the Microsoft XDR Defender connector, the alert coming from. And you can see anonymous IP address um, from this user, for example. Okay, when we go to the incident, for example, this one here, let's open the incident. On the left side, you can see here what's the workspace, where the alert is coming from, in this case, from Microsoft Enterprise ID Protection. Uh, you can see here your tasks, what are available. You can see here how many events. In this case, we don't have raw data in the system. We only get the alerts from the source system, and you have here one alert, no raw data. Here you can see the entities which are available. In this case, the IP address, the IPv6 uh, address, and also the user account. When we go here to the tasks, um, sorry, Tasks preview. You have here the ability to implement tasks, for example, uh, contact customer, or you can also you can uh, implement another task, for example, test two. You can save. And if the task is achieved, for example, you can click here um, on this button and one of two tasks is uh, finished. Okay. So what I want to do here is you can see here this user is using a pub anonymous IP address, so it's using a Tor browser to connect to uh, Microsoft Asia, for example. We can see here on my second browser, this is exactly the user. Test well managed. Is logged in. And I want to uh, revoke the session right now. So what you can do is you can go to the Microsoft Enter ID, select the user and revoke the session. What we can also do is we run an automation task in this case, or an automation playbook. Select here the user, and this is the entity-based trigger. When uh, select here incident action, run a playbook, this is the incident-based trigger. And this one here is the ent entity-based trigger. I select here the entity, test well managed, run a playbook, and here you can see all the 
incident-based trigger, uh, uh, entity-based trigger, which are available for the entity type account. And here you can see I have one playbook in place. Enter ID will revoke user session. And what I do now, I execute the script. In the back end, you can see here when I go to the next screen, this is the logic app. The logic app is now running. And the logic app is waiting. Why is it waiting? Because I have implemented uh, the logic here to ask the customer, is the revoke user session command in this case OK? So we can go here to the email. I get now an email. And you can see here, revoke user session for test well managed was requested by the SOC team. Is this uh, approved? Uh, do we want to approve this task or reject it? I'm now approving the task. Approve it again. And now you can see the task is running, the task is finished. And you also get an email, revoke user session um, was successfully run. When I go back to my user session, select here another thing, and you can see here my session is now revoked and I have to re log in into my system. So, this is one option what you have here to automate your environment to automate your incident. You can run it manually. You can uh, also implement an automation task, in this case, to execute an incident-based playbook. So we can go here to the automation task. You can select here or create here a new automation rule if you prefer, if you want. In this case, I've uh, implement also an automation rule named IR send email. And you can see here, this automation rule is triggered when an incident is created. You also have here the ability to, uh, when an incident is update, updated or when an alert is triggered, uh, to execute this automation rule. What you can do here, uh, what you can do here is you can change, for example, uh, the status from new to active. You can also uh, change the severity if you want from medium to high, from high to medium or to informatical, what you prefer. You can automatically assign this incident to an owner if you prefer. You can also add tags to your incident and also add a task list, for example, to each incident. And at the end, you have the ability to run a playbook. In my case, I'm running here and send mail playbook and every time when a new incident is created, I will add here, assign it to an owner, in this case to an admin account, change the incident status from active uh, from new to active, and assign here an tag, uh, and also add here and task contact customer. For example, you can also bring here more task into your uh, incident if you want. Okay, this is the ability what you have with uh, automation. This is really, really huge. So you have here different trigger ty types. You have the incident-based trigger, you have the entity-based trigger, and you can do everything what you want. You can uh, reset your user session. You can also bring your on-premise environment. So for example, um, remove a user from Active Directory or change the password from uh, the user in Active Directory. You can fulfill this with a hybrid automation task, for example. Uh, so we have really a lot of functionality here, what you can do from the automation perspective. Okay, so the time is good. Um, let me go back to the incidents. So let's select another incident, in this case, the conditional or the, I select this one here. This one here is the best one. Here. Okay, when we open the incident, here, you have here the ability to investigate, and that's the reason, uh, this is the reason why it's really important to have entities in place, because based on the entities, you can go here to investigate, and uh, you get here an overview about your incident, also the identities, and you can see here, when I select here the IP address, are there related events available? So that's a bit small here. Are there related events available with the same IP address? In this case, no. Uh, or are there related events available, for example, with this user account? And you can see here what's happening in your environment, how many users are affected, how many IP addresses are affected, or for example, um, how many users are affected from the um, attack here in this case. Okay, 
So that's it. I'm going back to my presentation. That's it from the second demo. Uh, let's have a recap. A recap, Microsoft Sentinel is a platform as a service product. So you're using platform as a service in Microsoft Asia. You don't have to think about how from the right sizing perspective, you don't have to think about licenses. You pay as you go. So you're starting with a pay as you go. And over the time, you can switch to a reserved instance uh, if you want. It's high available and it's high scalable. So when you implement Microsoft Sentinel, it's uh, in the regional service and it's high available and you can scale up and scale down. So it's making Microsoft for you. You get a better investigation and analyze for security issues because you can use artificial intelligence on your side. So when we think about uh, security, Copilot pilot is also uh, here and, and a huge topic in the near future. Uh, and you have a massive automation options here. So you have seen uh, only one use case, but they've uh, developed a lot more of use cases, what you can uh, do with automation. So in my point of view, there's no limit from the automation perspective. Okay, so that's from my session. Thank you. Thank you also for the sponsors to sponsor this um, uh, event. I'm really appreciate to um, be a member of this awesome event. Thank you. And I guess we have four minutes time work on other questions. Thank you so much, Hannes, for the session. This is a really great a lot of insights about Sentinel. So thanks a lot for the session. Uh, if anyone has any questions, maybe you can, you know, unmute yourself and ask question directly or feel free to drop in the chat window as well. Hi, this is Ripple here. Am I audible? Hi. Yeah, hi. So the, the question I have is like, we get the most of the content from the content of now, right? And uh, if there's an update for the available out of the box for the content, how we plan it to update? Like analytic rules have sometimes the updates and other things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the process for that update? Mm -hmm. So normally we uh, always implement two uh, environments, one dev environment, one productive environment. We update everything in the dev environment, test everything, and when everything is, is, is done, when everything is, is fine, we update uh, the, 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 um, uh, the analytics rule, for example, in the productive environment. So this is the process what we are doing on our customer uh, for our customers. So we always have two environments. Okay, okay. So first to roll out it in the lower environment as the first yes. and then to proceed for okay, got it. Thank you. Yes. What what you can do is uh, you can also use infrastructure as code. So for example, mm -hmm. we uh, implement always uh, analytics rules in the dev environment. Check in when everything is the test are fine. Check in into uh, GitHub for example and run CSD pipelines to implement the new rule to the productive environment. But how it will automatically, because we see the update icon near to the analytic rule that there's a new update available, but how the pipeline will uh, get to know that it has to update? Because previously when the pipeline ran initially, it would take the analytic rule which we provide. But now if there's an update to it, how it will automatically know or we need to download the JSON and push it to the CICD so that it will up get it updated like that we need to yeah. do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. There is one more question from Samik. Like, will Workspace Manager be helpful to roll out, roll out the update? Workspace Manager. Um, work, not really, because the Workspace Manager. Um, what, what you can do with Workspace Manager is you can implement more uh, Microsoft Sentinel environments, for example, in different regions, and you can bring all uh, workspaces into a single view, and this is the workspace manager. But I no, it's, it's not um, a helpful tool to update your rules. 
work with this manager. Okay, I think it's done. All right, thank you so much, Hannes, for the session. It was really great. Okay, I think there is one more question now on the chat window. Mm -hmm. Are the SSA components in Asia to secure more cloud? I don't really understand the question. Um, Uh, can you? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's, I'm asking the self sovereign identity part, it's a SSI systems, right? So, all the Azure it's a component installed, uh, whether it's uh, been rolled out in the uh, real time environment uh, so that we can make uh, something leverage on security. I'm talking about self sovereign identity part. So, that's what yes. I'm asking here. Mm -hmm. uh, how is it? It's already been included in Azure. How it's going to be implemented, or is there any still it's in leverage of improvements going on in Azure, or any other things it's added on? No. <laughs> okay. okay. OK, so when no questions available, so I think we can close the um, session. Okay. Thanks for having me and yeah, thank you so much. have a nice day. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. OK, bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I guess like, you know, uh, we need a couple of moments since track two, track three, there is session still going on. So, you know, the quiz will be conducted here in the track one. So if you guys still not uh, you know registered for the quiz, I'm going to share my screen. You can scan the QR code and get registered for, for it. Sorry, my connection was lost. The sharing the screen. I hope you can see my QR code for the quiz. For the quiz. Ah uh, yes, Mandip. We are able to see the screen and QR code. Great. Hi everyone. Hi Perumal. Hi. Hi.
Mandip, after typing the code, uh, enter the quiz code, it's not getting in. So still quiz is not started, right? No, quiz is not started yet. So actually, uh, all the track one, track two, track three, you know, we'll do this together. So we are okay. waiting for track three. Yeah. Track okay. three is done. Okay. okay. So we have everyone from all the tracks. I think track three is good to go. So uh, uh, what about track two? Andy, uh, track, track two good one. to go. Uh, I'm from track one. Uh, track two, I think Aniket. Yeah, track one is good. Is, is Aniket here? Shristi, you can probably start the quiz, uh, uh, like not start the questions, but start the quiz uh, so people sure, don't sure. wait in yeah. the lobby in the quiz. Uh, 